What up YouTube? Ed Wesker Griff coming back with a mail day recap video. Got several cards to show off, some purchases from Mike O and some non-sports editions, Game of Thrones, and also something a little different, so stay tuned. Got some great stuff to show off. But first, we got a package from this gentleman here on YouTube, Mr. Ricky Russo, and he wrote me a note here, as you can see. It says, only a select few have ever received a pair of Russo's balls. Congrats, Ricky Russo. So this goes straight into the YouTube PC, and this is what Ricky is talking about, being tongue-in-cheek. We got Alonzo Ball, the GOAT for the Lakers, from Don Russ. So we got a little big baller brand style, as I always like to tell Ricky. And then we got the Panini Prism, Alonzo Ball, best point guard in the history of the Lakers. Damn straight. So, Ricky, thank you so much for sending me a pair of your balls. Very, very generous, sir. Very awesome. <laughs> Alrighty. Next, on to the pickups from Mike O. Did a couple purchases from him. Uh, we did a live sale, and a couple people have been asking me about that. I know in the chat on Monday, a couple people were asking how we schedule these live sales. And basically, it's bi-weekly, so we do it. It's always on Monday, and it's usually every other week. But there's a lot of things coming up for both of us at the end of May and in June. So not sure if the schedule is going to continue, but uh, if we get an opportunity, we will probably do them on Mondays and it's always just a lot of fun to hang out talk with everyone in the community on the live chat and uh, hang out with Mike talk Phillies baseball uh, talk about the hobby and uh, it's always a great time so I look forward to doing it and did make a couple purchases off of Mike and I'll show off what I got uh, the first card here I actually didn't buy Mike offered this card for free in the live stream and no one wanted it uh, it was kind of dumbfounded why but we don't really get a lot of Red Sox fans up on the stream but this is Michael uh, Chavez, who is the second baseman for the Red Sox, and he's doing incredibly well. Uh, just belted a couple homers against the White Sox. This is the uh, Bowman insert, so Bowman Trendon insert. So no one claimed it. Don't know why, so I picked it up. Uh, next, picked up a couple Sapphires. We got J.J. Hardy from Topps Chrome. Really like these Sapphires, and the box prices on this stuff is absolutely ridiculous, as Mike was telling me. So we got J.J. Hardy. And then, as a joke, I picked this up. Yabaldo Jimenez. Uh, Yabaldo's time with the Orioles is in extremely infamous. They gave him a big contract, and he never lived up to it. I don't even think he had any quality starts with the Orioles. And uh, it's kind of a shame, because Yabaldo was a really solid pitcher for the Colorado Rockies. Had great success with them. Uh, did moderately well with the Indians, too. But uh, as soon as he went to Baltimore, his career absolutely died. But uh, Mr. Yabaldo Jimenez, I have no idea what he's doing now, but I don't think he's in baseball. Next, pick this up to potentially send to Mr. Ray from Chile. This is numbered at a 99 from Top's Finest. This is a O-Doubles Herrera. So, might send that to Ray down the line. And speaking of Ray, picked up an autograph of one of his favorite ex-Phillies, Mr. Aaron Altair. This is a high-tech autograph. So, Ray, you might be seeing this in the future. In a live mail day video. But uh, the two cards, the two main cards I picked up. And uh, the first one here um, was in one of Mike's boxes. I don't think he showed this card off. Didn't have time to get to that particular box. But this is out of Topps Inception. Numbered out of 99. On card autograph of Max Freed. Who's doing pretty damn well for the Atlanta Braves. Didn't do good tonight against the Dodgers. I think he got hit uh, with a line drive in the hand. So we'll have to see if he goes on the IL. But uh, I would say in the month of April, he's probably been the best pitcher in the National League or one of the best pitchers in the NL in the month of April. So he's a very young guy. He's a young guy. So I'll be curious to see if he can continue the pace. Uh, did get hit around pretty decently against the Dodgers. But like I said, we'll see uh, how he continues. So I wanted to get this for the PC just in case you never know. 
And speaking of having explosive Aprils, uh, Mike actually showed this card and nobody nobody bought it. He wanted $8 for this card. No takers. So the disrespect is real. So Mike put it was putting this card away and I said, hey, I would definitely like to buy that. So he's like, hold on, let me check eBay comps. He goes check eBay comps and the card sold for like 20 to 25 bucks with just like plain patches. And this card has way better patches. So um, we made a we made an arrangement and uh, was able to pick this up. So this is numbered out of twenty five. This is a patch autograph from Inception of Tim Anderson. And like I said, Mike tried selling this card for eight bucks on the stream. Nobody wanted it, so I said, "Hey, I'll take it." Tim Anderson's been a beast. Um, a lot of people might know him from doing the bat flip a couple weeks ago against the Royals. So if you look at his statistics for the month of April. The guy was hitting pretty much 400 the entire month, just destroying the baseball, getting on base, hitting the ball to all fields, and uh, stealing bases as well. I think he's the stolen base leader in the American League. So he's just been doing very, very well. Dare I say maybe the AL MVP for the month of April. Now, whether he can maintain that is another thing. So I'm kind of curious to see how he does the rest of the season. But without a doubt, he has caught my attention because he had a pretty solid second half last year, too. So he's been a very, very good player for the White Sox, and he's very, very young. So we'll see how he does. So I wanted to pick this up. And like I said, couldn't believe no one uh, pulled the trigger on it. So I pulled the trigger. So got it for the collection. And next, on to the Game of Thrones pickups. Uh, Game of Thrones right now has been really, really ridiculous. Obviously, with the final season, the prices have have exploded, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, a lot of cards are just uh, going up for crazy prices. Uh, there's kind of like some troll listings, I would say. Almost people listing stuff for like six, $700. Uh, some of that stuff is moving because... Uh, sellers are getting best offer and um, people are gravitating towards it because it's the final season but it's just been really really nuts uh, I saw Maisie Williams I have a ton of uh, her cards in my set uh, she plays Arya Stark uh, she's right here uh, Arya but her cards have just absolutely quadrupled in price it's insane so i still have to get one of her season seven autographs and that went from a 50 dollar card all the way up to like 120 so that really sucks but um i have to wait or i'll have to find one at auction but i'll get it done but here's the cards i picked up the first one here we got lem lemon cloak so these are all from season seven uh, Burn Gorman, who uh, some people might know from The Dark Knight Rises and also Turn Washington Spies. Uh, Sarah Dillon. Sebastian Croft, who plays a young Ned Stark. And then, for whatever reason, whenever this card gets listed, this is Danny Kareen. Uh, whenever this card gets listed it's always 25 30 bucks by it now rarely does this card come to auction i think it's because it's one of the more limited cards from season seven and it's frustrating because he's only in one episode and he's in that episode for maybe like three minutes but thankfully found an auction the auction ended at like four in the morning so i put my bid in won the card for six bucks so happy about that so yeah those are all the game of thrones autos and then um picked up this insert from one of the sellers that I picked up the autos of. This is a Season 3 insert of The Hound, Sandor Clegane. This is the Valor Morghulis um, subset from Season 3. And uh, the Valor Morghulis, uh, this is the promotional art, uh, the promotional artwork that they were doing for Season 3 when they were launching through HBO. And I remember it vividly because that's the season that I started watching the show. And got the HBO subscription. That's when I jumped on to Game of Thrones back in Season 3. But uh, really, really cool. Just like it. It's either Season 3 or Season 4. I'm pretty sure it's Season 3. But either way, very, very cool. Really, really like this. The Hound's my favorite character. So couldn't pass that up. Had to get that for the collection. So there we go. And last but not least, the last non-sports card I picked up. It's not from Game of Thrones. It's actually from the show right there, Stranger Things. 
Uh, Tops is making Stranger Thing autograph cards. And this guy was one of the redemptions. So, yes, Tops is even doing redemptions for non sports cards. But David Harbour from 2018 Stranger Things. And David Harbour, if you don't know, he plays one of the main characters. He plays Mr. Jim Hopper, who is one of my favorite characters in Stranger Things. My two favorite characters are Jim Hopper and Steve, uh, David Harbour, and Joe Keery. Both of them have autographs, but this is definitely, in my opinion, David Harbour's best autograph that they made so far. I think they made like three or four autographs of him. And the other one, the photo that they chose was a really, really poor photo. But this photo is really cool. It's a nice shot of him in his police uniform with his cigarette. The only thing that's missing is his coffee cup. So I couldn't pass that up. The autograph's pretty cool, but I'm just glad that it's on card because Tops has a horrible track record with doing sticker autographs if you look at their Star Wars product. And uh, overall, want to pick up a few more of these Stranger Things cards. They're really, really cool. Uh, just really like that show. That's probably going to be the next show that uh, after when Game of Thrones ends, I'll be following closely. Um, been following that show since season one, and the season two has been released, and season three comes out in July. So it's a really fun show. If you guys have Netflix, go check it out. But yeah, really happy to uh, get this Dave Harbour into the collection. And if you're wondering, I'm not going to be set collecting Stranger Things. Um, it's... It's weird to, uh, cause nobody in our community really collects non-sports like I collect it, uh, for Game of Thrones. So there's really like not a lot of people to talk to about this, but, um, I don't like the fact that Tops, uh, that Tops got the license for Stranger Things because they do a sports card, um, they do like a sports card model, selling model for non for non-sports. And I just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't feel right. And it just, I feel like it doesn't work. Uh, what I mean by that is, take for example, this card. They made variations of this card with a blue border, an orange border. So there's like one numbered out of 25. There's one numbered out of 10, numbered out of five. And then there's a one-on-one. So that, that to me, it just, uh, it makes sense. It's good for sports cards. I like it for sports cards, but it it, it feels like really out of place with non-sports. I just don't get it. And uh, Topps got the license for Walking Dead. Walking Dead, they made cards. Uh, Cryptozoic made cards for Walking Dead. And if you like look at the soul listings, if you look at the the people who collect those cards, uh, the Cryptozoic cards are very sought after, and people love those cards and. They retain their value very nicely, but if you look at the tops cards with all the sticker autos and all the cards numbered out of hundred, uh, numbered to hundred, numbered to fifty, numbered to twenty-five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, those those cards have. Uh, I mean, the collectors aren't really going after those cards as hard as they would go after the Cribzoic or the Written House Archives cards. So. I guess oversaturation and overproduction are my gripes here. But, like I said, that's one of the main reasons why I really got so much into collecting the Game of Thrones cards. Because Game of Thrones is my favorite show. I absolutely love that show. I'm totally invested into it. But I also love the company that's making the cards. Because it's, it's simplistic. Like, what I mean by that is, that's it. That's the autograph. There's not a... A variation of this card it's just this one this card's not numbered there's no numbering on it it's a limited card they made X amount of them that's it nothing's numbered the slump the simplicity is what non sports collectors really like so and that's what I really like so that's why I really always praise written house archives so much I just love what they do with their licenses and um, uh, not to poo poo on tops i mean this is a really really nice card and i would not have bought it if i didn't like it but uh it's just um it's just i feel like that model doesn't work for non-sports so that's just my opinion now and i'm, I'm sure there's nobody watching because like i said not a lot of people in the community get are involved with non-sports cards but that's just my take so uh kind of went off topic in this video but 
uh, that's all I got for you guys. So that's just some of my thoughts. You'll be seeing me break this box of Upper Deck uh, 92 that Saul sent me soon. Going to probably do that in my next video. So that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for hanging around. Non-sports forever essay and baseball cards forever too. So have a great one. Take care, guys. Peace. Have a great one.